to the acupuncture traditional Chinese medicine portion of this video. Okay, so earlier on we took a look at the back's anatomy to get a better understanding of how the structure of the back is anatomically shaped and how that then serves its function of keeping our body aligned in terms of its supportive role and its and its role in movement. Okay. So today we're going to map out the acupuncture point to the governing vessel or the two meridian. Okay, so I have my acupuncture book here. And I'm gonna place it right over here. Okay. Alright. use this ruler to mark out the landmarks. We already place a sticker in the main landmarks of the back. C7, D4, T7. meridian, the Huato Jiajis, which are external extra meridians, extra points, as well as the small intestine meridian acupoints, which are tend to be located in the scapular region over here. Okay, but first, so we worked our way down from the cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral, and coccyx in the previous video. In this video, we're going to work our way up from the coccyx up to the to the cervical to the head okay the first acupuncture point is called chang chang or governing vessel one it's a luo connecting point and it's located midway at the tip of the coccyx and the anus okay so remember the uh, conception vessel or the ren meridian started at the perineum which is located at the between the anus and the genitals. So in this photo over here, you can kind of see where that is. Over here, you can see governing vessel one, and right at the at, at the opposite end is the governing vessel. Um, is sorry, if the conception vessel one is in the perineum, which is located right over here, it's anterior to the anus, midway between the anus and the genital. Governing vessel 1 is posterior to the anus in between the coccyx, which is the tip of the tip of the tailbone, and the anus. So that's governing vessel 1. Governing vessel 1 is a luo connecting point. Okay. And this has been sometimes called the door of life and death. It is used to treat diarrhea, hematochesia, which is rectal bleeding, hemorrhoids heavy sensation in the anus, prolapse of the rectum, prolapse of the uterus, prolapse of the vagina, dysuria, urinary retention, constipation, lumbar pain, sacral pain, coccygeal pain, a 
epilepsy, depression, mania, heaviness of the head. So a lot of the um, conditions that you would find in that area. One interesting thing, a story that my anatomy teacher taught me is that the coccyx, which is a tailbone, can actually, it can get misaligned, so to speak. Uh, this happened in one of his patients where this girl jumped um, from a cliff onto a lake and cannonballed, thinking that it's water, it'd be a soft landing, but landed essentially bum first into the water and that impact of that water to the coccyx was so severe enough that it was able to um, lodge the coccyx anteriorly so it was able to misalign it the impact misaligned the coccyx from the sacrum and it was extremely painful and the treatment for that was to digitally insert a finger into the rectum and to manipulate that coccyx back to its place. So you can imagine how embarrassing that was for that individual. So just saying that although these bones are um, usually held in place, they're supposed to be immobile, there are times where a strong impact could um, cause injury. So just important to know. Right, so in TCM or traditional Chinese medicine, we say that it regulates the governing and conception vessel. So we already saw the conception vessel in a previous video. Now we're talking about the governing vessel. It resolves damp heat. Damp heat essentially is what diarrhea is in most of the time because it's it's hot, it's damp, it's smelly calms the mind. Um, I mentioned earlier that conception one is a ghost point. So back then it was believed that a lot of um, mental health disorders such as mania uh, was due to um, spirits uh, possessing the individual. So these points were actually used to exercise those spirits out of the body. That's why it's considered a ghost point. Stops diarrhea regulates the two lower orifices, relieves the swelling, removes obstruction, relieves pain, strengthens the lower back, expels the exterior wind. Okay, so we want to puncture this perpendicularly about 0 0.5 to 1 inch, and we're just being cautious of the pudental and coccygeal nerves that are located around that region. Next is governing vessel 2. Okay, governing vessel 2 is at the sacral hiatus. So remember earlier I showed you that sacrum, which is this triangular shaped bone. Let me just see if I can find it. Oh, this is a good picture. Alright, so this is the spine. If this is the spine right here. From cervix, thoracic, lumbar, sacrum, coccyx. Okay, between the coccyx and the sacrum, there is a hiatus, kind of like a uh, two, again, horned structure where the where the spinal cord exits and becomes a cauda equina. Okay, that is the meeting point between the coccyx and the sacrum. That joint, that is where governing vessel two or Yao Shu is located. It's called a sacrococcygeal joint. This is used to treat irregular menses, leucorrhea, lumbar pain, sacral pain, coccygeal pain, hemorrhoids, epilepsy, convulsions, and spasms. Or in traditional Chinese medicine, we tend to say it expels interior wind, strengthens the lower back, warms the lower burner, expels wind damp, and strengthen the knees, okay? Again, we're conscious of the coccygeal nerve. So, governing vessel 1 is at the tip of the coccyx. Governing vessel 2 is where the coccyx and the sacrum would meet. So, that's um, how you would needle those. Governing vessel 3. Okay, governing vessel 3 is Yao Yang Guan. Okay, it's inferior to the spinous process of the fourth lumbar vertebra at the level of the superior border of the iliac crest. Okay, earlier in the previous video, we talked about that. Um, 
the ala or the wing, the superior iliac crest, that is where that is. So when we locate it then over here, okay, and we said it's here, right? Let's see, when we draw a line L4, actually right over there, right underneath that is governing vessel 3. So we're going to take our sticker and mark that. So the red are the spinous process. Underneath of it, there's a space. So if you look at the spine again, it's a better picture. If you look at the spine, right, those, jut those, those structures that are jutting out, these are the spinous processes. In between that, that's where we needle. That's where we put the acupuncture point. Right? This is a demonstration of the cervical spine. As you can see, the C7 is very long. As we said earlier, it's the longest um, spinous process of all the vertebra. So we're going to take this sticker and palpate the divot or the indentation underneath L4, and that is where we're going to insert the needle. So the blue represents the acupuncture points governing vessel 3, okay? Governing vessel 4, Ming Men, is a really, really important. Ming Men is considered the door of life, okay? So it's good, completely the opposite, right um, across CV8 or where the belly button was. We talked about that in a previous video, right? Where the solar plexus is, right? So right behind, so the chakras themselves are also in the posterior part of the body. Surprise, surprise, right? So we start with the Muladhara chakra or the root chakra, which is located in the perineum. Move our way up, okay? And just above the genitals, that would be the sacral chakra, okay, all the way to the umbilicus. So the Ming Men um, is a really important point, especially for Taoist practitioner. It tends to be a very grounding, energetic center. So when you are feeling flustered or nervous or anxious or just have a lot of energy that you need to discharge, that could feel really ungrounding. All you gotta do is focus on the Ming min Men. And the way to do that is to take one of your fingers and find your umbilicus, your belly button, place it there, and slowly begin to bring your attention to that area by closing your eyes and directing your breath to the umbilicus and imagining a straight line from the umbilicus to back the Ming Men. If it's hard to do that, it can be helpful to reach back behind you and place a finger to that area. Ming Men is located to the inferior of the spinous process of the second lumbar vertebra. So if this is L4, we move up. This is L3. Okay, L2. So Ming Men is located over here. So I'm just going to mark that with a sticker as well. So remember the blue ones are the acupuncture points. So L4. This L4. L3. L2. Yeah, so between L2 and L3, there is a space for the needle to enter. And that's Ming Men. Okay, this is good for stiffness of the back, lumbar pain, erectile dysfunction, nocturnal emissions, seminal emissions, infertility, irregular menses, cold in the uterus, recurrent miscarriage, even urinary frequency, urinary incontinence, prolapse of organs, edema, diarrhea, hematochesia indigestion, leucorrhea, premature aging, poor vision, depression, poor memory, fear, lack of will, headache, dizziness, epilepsy, exhaustion. As you can see, the list of uses is extensive. 
it tonifies the kidney yang, benefits the original chi, warms the gate of vitality, dissipates cold, clears heat, strengthens the lower back, benefits the essence and regulate the governing vessel, calming the mind and expelling inferior interior wind. Okay. This area is particularly concerned about the kidney and the kidney essence. Earlier I talked about the Jing, which is essentially your battery that is irrechargeable. Once you've used up all your Jing, that's it. You don't have any more. So it's very important to preserve the Jing by preserving our energy through rest, diet, and proper amount of exercise, meaning not too much or not too little. And also conserving our sexual energy as well. That's part of maintaining the Jing. Governing vessel number five or Xuan Shu. Okay. And if that's not enough to convince you, think about the Jing as your fountain of youth. The more Jing you have, the younger you'll look. So just uh, think about it that way. Okay, moving on to governing vessel 5, Xiangzhu. It's in the inferior of the spinous process of the first lumbar vertebra. Okay, so if this is where L2 is, we just move up to L1, and that's where governing vessel 5 would be. Vessel number six is Shizong, and this is located to the inferior of the spinous process of the 11th thoracic vertebra, which is essentially the um, solar plexus, okay? So remember it was CV12, that's the front root point of the stomach, that was the solar plexus on the anterior portion or the meridian, okay, or in the run, run meridian, conception vessel. In the back, in the do, we have governing vessel six. Okay, so it's the 11th thoracic vertebra. Okay, so if we said that this is D12, so D11 is right here. So this is the First number vertebra. Okay, L1. So this is T12. Okay, and T11. So right. T12. T11. Okay, so it'll be right underneath of that. Song. This is good for epigastric pain, abdominal distension, diarrhea. strengthens low back puncture perpendicularly 
0 0.5 to 1 inch, and we're watching out for the branch of the 11th thoracic nerve and the spinal cord, of course, because we are inserting it in between into the spine, so it's very important to be cautious about the spinal cord. It's also interesting to note here that we're watching out for um, the branch of the 11th thoracic nerve, so the unique thing about the thoracic vertebra is that there is an attachment for the ribs or the costal facets, okay, because the ribs then branch out here. So that's why those nerves are also of a concern. Governing vessel number seven, or Zhongzhu, is on the inferior aspect of the spinous process of the 10th thoracic vertebra. So, if this is the 11th, it's 11th, so 10th, the 11th, 10th, 10th, 11th, 10th, so then it'll be under the 10th. Governing vessel number seven treats epigastric brain, abdominal distension, stiffness of the back, lumbar pain as well, and strengthens the lower back, harmonizes the middle burner, and relieves pain. And we want to puncture this perpendicularly or obliquely, 0 0.5 to 1 inch, and we're watching for the branch of the 10th thoracic nerve. So when we're needling it perpendicularly, we're going straight down. When we're needling it obliquely, we're going downwards. Okay. Governing vessel number eight, or Jin Suo, is inferior to sp inf spinous process of the ninth thoracic vertebra. We're gonna look for it first, so if this is the 10th, right over here, the 9th is right over here, and it's just one underneath of that. This line, 10th, will be right here. This one is good for epilepsy, convulsions, stiffness of the back, neck, rigidity, headache, epigastric pain, hiccup, nausea, diarrhea, hypochondriac pain, cholecystitis, or inflammation of the gallbladder, hepatitis, inflammation of the liver, irritability, anger, muscle spasm. So irritability and anger tends to be governed by the liver organ in traditional Chinese medicine, and because this is now much closer to the liver, that is why that is um, responsible for those. And we're going to be watching out for the branch of the ninth thoracic nerve as well as the spinal cord. Okay. Governing vessel number nine is underneath T7. So earlier on, we talked about how the base, the apex of the scapula, or the pointy tip, actually is, um, for most people, it is in line. So if we take our handy dandy ruler over here, it is actually in line. This is, you can feel that. That's the base of the scapula, right? This is actually in line with T7, and that's why we put a sticker.
D7, and that's where governing vessel 9 would be under. So, 9, and also go 8, and 7. So that would be just right under there. This is where the buoys are at. You would feel a depression or a valley, then that's where the acupuncture point, the acupuncture needle would go. Right over there. Just put a sticker over there. It's called Gia. It's good for jaundice, cough, asthma, dyspnea, fullness of the chest, stiffness of the back, chest pain and back pain. It regulates the liver and gallbladder and harmonizes the middle burner. It also moves Qi and opens the chest and resolves damp heat. Okay, you want to puncture it obliquely, 0.5 to one inch superiorly. So we're gonna actually face the needle upwards because the spinous processes themselves are facing downwards. So we want to kind of angle it in a way that goes upwards. I think I mentioned earlier we were going downwards and I'm actually gonna go upwards. Vessel number 10. Okay. Governing vessel number 10 or linked eye is inferior to the spinous process of the 6th thoracic vertebra. So if this is 7th, okay. 6 must be this one. And it's just going to go right underneath of that. Governing vessel 10, that's good for cough, asthma, wheezing, dyspnea, back pain, neck rigidity. Neck pain disperses lung chi, okay. relieves coughing, stops wheezing, clears heat, and removes obstruction. And this is much closer to the lung area now, over here. Governing vessel number 11 is Sheng Dao. It's located inferior to the spinous process of the fifth thoracic vertebra. So we said this was the sixth. Okay, we just move our way up. So this is the fifth. I can feel a very bony prominence there. So then that's just gonna go underneath that bony prominence or just underneath the spinous process. Okay. There we go. They're a bit lower. So imagine the red is the spinous process and in between there that's where the needle would go okay that's good for poor memory headache anxiety depression mania hysteria insomnia palpitation back pain and stiffness of the cough and cardiac pain so here we're seeing a lot of heart symptoms in TCM it does this tonify the heart tonifies the lung calms the mind clears heat opens the chest expels the interior wind and relieves pain. So similar to CV17, right? The front move point of the pericardium. Treats a lot of the heart condition, which is a lot of the insomnia, anxiety, sleeplessness. Governing vessel number 12 is inferior to the spines versus of the third thoracic vertebra. So earlier on, we've located the T3 by finding the spine of the scapula, which is the 
it's bony. Like this is scapula, spine, and we said it's somewhere around here, which we're gonna also count by D1 for the top. D1. This is C7, 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 D1, D2, D3. just right underneath the third thoracic spine process. Okay. And D3 also happens to be aligned with the spine of the scapula. Alright, so governing vessel number 12 is good for cough, asthma, bronchitis, shortness of breath, dyspnea, frequent colds, rhinitis, headaches, epilepsy, back pain, and stiffness, arthritis, grief and sadness, which has to do with the lungs, and mania. In TCM, we say it expels into your wind, tonifies the lung qi, disperses lung qi, as you can see, it's talking about the lungs in the traditional Chinese medicine sense, releases the exterior, regulates the heart, calms the mind and clears lung heat. So we're gonna puncture this obliquely. 0 0.5 to 1 inch, okay. Superiorly going upwards. And we're just watching out for the branch of the third thoracic nerve and the spinal cord as well. Moving on to governing vessel number 13 or Tao Dao. Okay. Governing vessel 13 is the inferior to spinous process of the first thoracic vertebra. So remember we found C7. This is C7 right here. Sometimes it's better for me to close my eyes because then I can feel better the different types of bones. Right, so we would look at it C7, T1, so it would be right over underneath that T1 vertebra. of the back, headache, malaria, alternating fever and chills, febrile diseases, it clears heat, releases the exterior, regulates the Xiao Yang patterns and clears the lung heat, regulates the governing vessel and calms the mind. We want to puncture it obliquely about 0 0.5 to 1 inch superiorly upwards and we're watching out for the branch of the first thoracic nerve as well as the spinal cord. Next is governing vessel number 14 which is underneath uh, the seventh cervical vertebra, which will be located here, which you can locate onto yourself by just placing your head down. It'll be a very bony prominence, and if you move your neck, it also tends to move as well. So this is the meeting point of the six yang channels. Okay, so it's quite an important point. from my Fucambelia plant and um, one of my favorite house plants because I gave it as a gift to my mom about about nine or ten years ago and it's now this beautiful gorgeous beautiful um, 
bush that it's turned into be and now it's in full bloom and I've decided to just uh, wear uh, it flowers in my hair okay so governing vessel 14 or da su it's inferior to the spinous breast of the seven cervical vertebra okay so there's the seven vertebra we're just gonna place that there and that's good for neck pain neck rigidity malaria febrile disease epilepsy afternoon fever sore throat cough asthma common cold sneezing rhinitis depression confusion poor memory poor concentration insomnia sweating urticaria or itchiness eczema back stiffness it clears the heat it clears the heat releases the exterior expels the wind regulates the nutritive and defensive chi and it def disperses lung chi calms the mind and tonifies the yang punctures obliquely of 0 0.5 to 1 inch and we're washing up for the branch of the eighth cervical nerve and the first thoracic nerve and the spinal cord this point is quite important because when we're talking about external wind those are external pathogenic wind or um what they believe to be conditions that can make us sick so when you go outside in a cold you're more susceptible to catching a cold that's because this is an entry point for wind that's attacking the lungs okay the lungs are very susceptible to wind external wind especially and so in cold days it's very important to cover this part of the body to prevent that external pathogenic wind from entering and causing sickness um, and uh, when it talks about the um, protective chi that's also called the wei chi or essentially your immunity and that's why the lungs are particularly susceptible to infections um, they tend to be the first one to be affected especially by these external pathogens in traditional chinese medicine these pathogens can um, be a cause of internal from the inside or external external so in the external sense things such as wind cold heat dryness dampness all these things can cause illnesses so by protecting our body by clothing ourselves properly and uh, protecting ourselves from the elements we can prevent ourselves from getting sick especially now in this time of year where we are in change of season it's a very susceptible time for a lot of people to get sick so take care of yourself in chinese medicine they even have a special soup they drink during these transition called the change of season soup literally has four ingredients um you can look it up or i'll post a link on the description below you can check it out you can make it yourself it's quite tasty and that'll just help protect your immunity okay all right so the next is um the head stuff uh, i think we're gonna stop from here and we're going to do that part of the governing vessel or the do meridian in a separate video where we just locate all the acupuncture points of the head but for now we're gonna stop here so today we did the governing vessel uh, one up to 14 from the coccyx all the way to the base of the cervical um, spine c7 i hope you enjoy this video if you're still awake i'd really appreciate if you give this video a thumbs up and comment uh, that's how the youtube algorithm determines that this video is uh, valuable and it then pushes it out to more people like you who could benefit from this video i really love making educational content and as many of you have been in school for quite a number of years and um, so i'm really appreciative to people who support me financially either by hitting that super thanks button or by supporting me on patreon once again, thank you all so much. I wish you all a good night and um, see you in the next video.